Okay, and what are your earliest memories of life in Mount Gambier? Yeah, there's only two butcher shops in Mount Gambier, Eggs's and MacArthur's. And the floor was covered with sawdust and there was a big red gob block in the middle of the floor and they used to cut all the meat on, the, on that block. And there was no butt to cut, cut those days, it was all beef. Why wasn't there any mutton? No. Why was there no mutton? No, I don't know why there wasn't any mutton, but the, there was no mutton, it was all beef. Were there rabbits? Yes. And could you buy them from the butcher shop or you had a rabbit eye coming yeah. around? The, <coughs> You could buy them in the butcher shop. What about some of the other shops in Mount Gambier at that time? A half a dozen barber shops. The hair cut for a shilling, and a packet of cigarettes was only threepence a packet. Only one brand of capsules, and I think there was ten cigarettes in the, in the packet. So were you a smoker, Stan? And my mother said to me, if you want to smoke, she said, you can smoke, but don't go beyond my back to, to smoke. If you to take my advice, you wouldn't smoke. So if you took us for a walk down the main street of Mount Gambier, say around about 1905 or in the early 1900s, what would we see as we walked down the main street of Mount Gambier? It was Rogers and Rogers, grocer shop, co-op, grocer shop. We had a baker call on you three times a week for threepence a loaf. So he'd come to your house with a horse and cart? Yes. What about milk? Bob Smith had a milk round. My brother was on the cart, he used to sell it by the pint. So you had a billy that you'd take out to the milk cart, didn't you? Yes. And a couple of cans in the back of the car with a middle hole in the, on the tailboard with a tap on it. Oh, so he'd turn the tap on to get the milk to come out? Yes. And he'd take it into the house. Was it the same with the bread? You didn't have to actually go outside to get the bread? No. The baker used to call on you and the butcher used to call on you. So you didn't have to go shopping at all, really? No. What about green groceries? You'd have to go in and get them, I guess. Yes, you have to. All, all groceries were packed beyond the counter those days. If you wanted a pound of sugar or half a dozen pounds of sugar or tea, it was all packed behind the counter for you. And what would they pack it in? In favour of A. And what other things would you go shopping for in the main street? If you wanted cigarettes or tobacco, you just have to go in and buy them. We've got butchers, we've got uh, hairdressers, we've got uh, a greengrocer in the main street. Yes. What are some of the other businesses in the main street at that time? News agents. And there was two papers in Mount Gambier bought watching the South East of Star. Bought a watch used to be delivered to you. So Stan, tell us about where you were living at that stage. Crowd Street North. That was a home place, mother and father. Were the streets paved in those days? Or they... No, there was a limestone street, a commercial street was a limestone full of potholes. And the street that you were living on was the same, was it? Yes. I oh, rode to work on a bicycle. Yes. Where was work? Something Town Cheese Factory was my first job. And how old were you then? Sixteen. Turn the cheese every once a day. Stir in the milk with this for a rake. How long did you spend working there, Stan? 22 years. Oh, a long time. It's all hygiene today. Remember working, working in the, at home, you would had a stool in one hand, a bucket in the other hand. If a cow was quiet, you'd milk it without putting her in the bowl. <laughs> so you just stand out in the paddock? Yes. <laughs> How big an area of land did you have on Crouch Street North? 20 acres. And tell us about what farming involved in those days. Years ago, they used to have it was horse-drawn vehicles. How many cows did you have? Twelve. Yeah, all milked by hand. So were you doing the milking as well? Yes. So in the morning you'd milk the cows? Yes. Then you'd go to the cheese factory and do some work there? Yes. And come back at night and milk the cows again? That's right. Twice a day, seven days a week. Let's go back into Mount Gambier again. Tell us about how big a place it was then compared with what it is now. Commercial Street has grown since well, I was a boy. Oh, all God. limestone buildings. Today it's all bricks. Let's go up the road a bit, uh, maybe up Bay Road. Was that the posh part of town in those days? Yes. Oh, tell us about some of the people who lived up there. Mr Davison, he was a lawyer in the town. He lived on Bay Road. And there was a nursing home right up the top of Mount Gamble where the soldiers were already was across the road. And if we go down to the Blue Lake, what was mm. it, the Blue Lake? Pasted rail fence around the Blue Lake those days. And the Valley Lakes, you must have gone there on occasion. Yes, Valley Lake and Browns Lake. I don't think there's any water in the leg of mutton now. Used to, a Sunday afternoon, you'd go for a walk and you'd go walk around all those places. Mm -hmm. Have a picnic, perhaps? Yes. What was at the lakes area in terms of facilities, if anything? No, there were no facilities. That stone wall around the, the Blue Lake was built in a day. Everybody, horse and dray, and everybody was, was available was, went there and built that wall. Were you part of that? Yes. What was your job? Carting the stones, 
see, uh, there was no crushes in those days. All the stone was dapped by a, a band. He used to have a hammer and break all the stones on the heaps. So for your brother who was working on the roads, he was pretty fit by the sounds yes. of it? Yes, Tommy Weber was the champion stone crutter. So they used to have competitions, did they? Yes. To see who could break the most stone. All right, uh, wandering around Mount Gambia a bit further, Van Sittard Park. What can you recall about Van Sittard Park? Uh, all pine trees around Van Sittard Park. There was no park there at all. Mm-hmm. All sport was played on Wednesday afternoon. The shops used to close on Wednesday afternoon and the, all sport was played Wednesday afternoon. There was three f- football teams, Rovers, Wanderers and Alberts. Did you play football? No. So whereabouts was the sport played? Played Van Sitter Park. Oh, yes, and yes. F- Frew Park. And why was Wednesday afternoon chosen? I don't know. So what time were the shops closed so that the sport could take place? They closed at 12 o'clock. Were the shops open on Saturdays in those days? No. So things have certainly changed there. <laughs> when we were kids, all the gun clubs was was shot, birds were shot on through Park, the guess where the gun club was. They used to give us a bird, we used to take it out and put it in the traps and go back. A live bird? <laughs> live birds, and starlings, let... starlings and, and sparrows. So they let the bird go and you try and shoot them? Mm. At Fru Park? Yes. You wouldn't do that today? <laughs> were there any other sports played? Cricket maybe? Uh, yes, there was cricket played. That was what played on Fru Park. And that was on a Wednesday afternoon too? Yes. Did you go to church on Sundays? Yes, I went to Presbyterian and Methodist. Read the collar and tie. The collection in those days was threepence and sixpence. All church service was, 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 was quarter to seven at night, and all the all the church bells used to ring. And I don't think there's only one church bell rings now, and that's the Lutheran church. Yes. So they quarter to seven at night on a Sunday. Yeah. Mm. It was lovely to hear the high gospel at night. To hear all the church bell ring, they used to ring for a quarter of an hour. It was lovely to hear the balls. So you meet a lot of people in the street on Sunday nights? Yes. Let's talk about motor cars. When did you see your first motor car? Uh, it was commercial street. It was held, only one motor car in Mount Gambia, and it was held by a Dr. Johnson, little single-seater singer. And then the motor buggy came in. And I think there was only two boat motor buggies. One was held by Bernara Homestead, and one was held by Mr. Truman. He became mayor about here at one time. I can remember them go with, it was just like a buggy, but it used to be driven. So can you remember when your family bought their first motor car? Yes, can't think of the date. What, what sort of car was it? A Rover, a second-hand car, and all had disc wheels. At that stage, were there many cars in Mount Gambia? No. Dave Gibbs used to come out at night time and set up a restaurant on Commercial Street near the, the town hall, the, the institute. And you could buy a fl- floater there for, for threepence and sixpence, a f- f- pie floating in soup. Now what about aeroplanes, Stan? Can you remember the first aeroplane coming to Mount Gambia? Yes. See, years ago, it was compulsory military training. <laughs> military training, at, we used to dress up in a uniform. Was, and was that when you saw an aeroplane when you were on training, was it? Yes. Whereabouts was that? The drill hall near the state school.